We are on the podium and TV side here at the NFL Scouting Combine in front of the CBS Sports set, and we are joined by CBS Sports HQ NFL analyst Ryan Wilson. You're also the co-host of the With the First Pick podcast, cleverly and conveniently named for a scouting combine. And by the way, <laughs> with someone you guys might be familiar with, Rick Spielman's my co-host. That's right. Former Vikings general manager Rick Spielman, who, uh, you know, it's funny, I'll tell a quick story. Go a lot it. of times when guys move on from jobs they've had for a while, fans are happy to see them go. Every time I'm with Rick out in public, Vikings fans to a fall come up to Rick and say, thank you so much for what you did. And I'm like, I spent a lot of time with Rick. I don't get that vibe, but okay, I'm glad that you fool people into thinking that you're good. So anyway, Rick's great. He's the co-host. He offers a ton of insights and, and uh, knowledge that I obviously don't have, and it's always great to, to get together with him, even if he says mean things to me. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I, he does it out of love. We know him That's very what he well. Tells me. He does it yeah. out of love. <laughs> well, you guys obviously talk a lot about the draft and, yeah. and scouting combine prospects, things like that on there. And recently your mock draft came out. And then the pick number, I think it was yesterday, actually. Oh, boy. Okay. Pick number 11, Minnesota Vikings taking cornerback Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo, which I know was a senior bowl yeah, standout. Is, right, is that Tatum. why he crept up the board for you? So Rick and I talked a lot about him over the fall, and he went to Toledo, so a smaller school. He wasn't an Alabama player, didn't play at Georgia. So I wanted to see at the senior bowl how he looked against guys that played mm -hmm. uh, Power 5 football, and he looked like he belonged and then some. He had three great days of practice, didn't play in the game, didn't need to. Mm -hmm. uh, for me right now, he's my cornerback one, so he's the first cornerback off the board, if I recall correctly, in that mock draft. That's a need for Minnesota. They have other needs, of course. Quarterback, edge rusher, too, if you want to go down those roads. Uh, Rick, I believe, likes him as his cornerbacks 1.5 so after Terry and Arnold but I loved everything about Queen's game he's long he's fast and he feels like a guy that can come in right away and, and make an impact what specifically about him do you think would fit so well into a Brian Flores does oh he's so incredibly physical mm -hmm. he looks the part I, I'm interested to see how much he weighs and how tall he is I'm eyeballing he's probably close to 6'1 maybe just a shade under mm -hmm. he looks like he's about 190 195 and he he's gonna run well if he decides to run here fast and like I said, he's physical. He moves well laterally. And he allows Brian Flores to be aggressive in the front seven, knowing that Quinion on the back end can, can lock down these receivers, which makes that defense what makes it work. You have to be able to, to, to cover on the back end for a little longer than perhaps other defenses. And I think he provides that. And that feels like something that he could do pretty early in his career. So the Vikings do have a draft pick on the second day in yeah. the second round, but they do not pick again until day three. So what is a good position of value on day two for the Vikings? Well, I want to see how the quarterback situation plays out. Mm -hmm. If Kirk comes back, it might make more sense to look at a quarterback on day two because if you take a first-round quarterback, the expectation is he's going to have to play soon. And Kirk, when he's healthy, was playing some of his best football. So day two uh, quarterback could be an option. I've been beating the Spencer Rattler drum out of South Carolina as a developmental quarterback. Uh, maybe even a Michael Pratt at Tulane. Uh, he might be closer to the third to day three, so we'll see about that. But then edge rusher. And there are going to be some guys that can go on day two that can provide immediate sort of designated pass rush help. Uh, Christian Braswell out of um, Alabama played opposite Dallas Turner. Had a really strong season. We spent a lot of time talking about his teammate Dallas Turner, who's going to be a, probably a top 15 pick. Christian Braswell has a chance to be really good. Austin Booker out of Kansas is a, a fantastic athlete who's only going to get better the more he plays. Uh, Marshawn Nealon's another edge rusher who had a great uh, senior bowl. Brandon Dorless out of uh, Oregon uh, is a little bigger plays uh, more defensive line. So there are a ton of guys that could be there on day two that could have impacts, and um, that might be a route you go. I suppose cornerback could also be a conversation there if you go another position round one. Uh, this draft is incredibly deep in a lot of positions, so there will be a lot of choices to be made. And when you're picking 11th or 12th or 13th in the middle of that first round, you have to see what happens ahead of you. There's going to be a lot of quarterbacks that go, and maybe the Vikings will be in that conversation. Some offensive tackles and some wide receivers, and then you can you can sort out what's there and which guys you like, and then reevaluate once you get to day two. I was just going to mention, you know, those the positions of need obviously for every team. There's there's a few to really to really circle on. Let's look at the class though. Is yeah. there a position on day three that you think there still be plenty of value at? A wide receiver, and it mm -hmm. feels like these wide receiver classes keep getting better and better as mm -hmm. these offenses evolve moving up from high school through college and that show themselves in the NFL several years after that. And this wide receiver group is going to be good. I think it's going to be better than last year's group. Okay. And there's going to be a lot of guys that run fast. 
There'll be a lot of guys that are great route runners, a lot of guys that can catch, and you can get those guys on day three. Uh, Jaquan Jackson, we've been talking a lot about out of Tulane. He's okay, the senior yeah. bowl. He has returnability. It's not that the Vikings are necessarily in the business of a wide receiver, but you can never have too many. You still need mm-hmm. wide receiver three, wide receiver four, and he's a guy who, who can do a lot. And um, we're seeing these smaller receivers be a little bit more valuable. Tank Dell last year was a third-round pick. In previous years, he may not have gotten drafted until late day three because he is only 5'8". He plays much bigger than that, and you're going to see a group of those guys in this draft class should you be interested in day three in a wide receiver yeah, where course. the class is incredibly deep. Well, Ryan, we appreciate your insight so much because no one researches the NFL just like you. You've got it on lock, I feel like. <laughs> Thank you, Tatum. Uh, no, of course, you can listen to Ryan as well as Rick Spielman on the uh, on on the With the Pick with the first pick you got it. podcast and also cbssports.com cbs sports app has all of their combine coverage for 24 7 streaming if you can't yes. get enough of ryan he's going to be on there all and week long can. and you, you can, can enough, yes. well we appreciate your time thank and you, your Daniel. insight thank you <laughs>